Hello, welcome to the video. I'm Tim Sandal and this video supports the University of Manchester pharmaceutical industry advanced training program, specifically the microbiology component. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the concept of sterility assurance, the sterility assurance level, and how biological indicators help us to assess sterility assurance and to vary any necessary parameters. And this video is designed to help you to interpret the course material. Okay, so we have the term sterility assurance. And sterility assurance is the combination of two words for which we can develop the following definitions. So we have sterility, which is the state of being free from viable microorganisms. And the word assurance, which is a positive declaration designed to give us a degree of confidence. And sterility assurance is all about the wider embracement of the key aspects of good manufacturing practice designed to render something sterile or at least free from having contamination introduced. Importantly, the term sterility assurance is not the same as the sterility assurance level. And unfortunately, some students tend to get the two terms um, confused. Sterility assurance is the overall holistic review of all the various elements that go into making a sterile pharmaceutical product safe, whereas the sterility assurance level is a specific term that relates to a terminal sterilization process. So what do we mean by the sterility assurance level? Well, the sterility assurance level is a quantitative assessment of sterility. And it describes the probability of a single unit being non-sterile after a batch of product has been subject to a terminal sterilization process. Or in other words, it's about the probability of a single viable microorganism surviving on or within an item after it's been sterilized. And this term is limited to terminal sterilization. So it cannot and should not be applied to aseptic manufacturing. Now the sterility assurance level is not a definition of the assurance of sterility per se, rather it is the probability of non-sterility. So we're looking at it from the perspective that what is the chance that the sterilization process that we've used has failed to destroy all of the microorganisms? So that's probably the easiest way to think of the concept. Okay, so also with the sterility assurance level, the reason that sterilization is discussed in terms of probability is because it's impossible to prove that all microorganisms have been destroyed in a batch of product. And this is because microorganisms could be present but undetectable. It could be that the cultural conditions that we might use to try and um, show sterility are not suitable for recovering those microorganisms. Or it could be that the microorganisms themselves have a non-culturable aspect, so they're active, they're viable, but they cannot be cultured using conventional um, recovery methods. And this is one of the reasons why the sterility test is regarded as somewhat weak. Okay, so with the sterility assurance level, it can be used to estimate the microbial population that was theoretically destroyed by the sterilization process. And we can assess this because microorganisms are destroyed in a linear manner. So we know that each 
logarithmic reduction represents a 90% reduction of the microbial population. So when we define sterility or sterilization as achieving a 6 log reduction, then this will be what we're using to describe the elimination of a million microorganisms to a value close to zero theoretically. And in assigning a quantitative value of a sterility assurance to say 10 to the power of minus 6, this then gives us a greater assurance of sterility than say if we were to use a SAL of 10 to the power of minus 3. So we can demonstrate the sterility assurance level um, by using spores in a special preparation called biological indicators. And we're expressing the SAL as a negative fraction, so that's why I've written this 10 to the power of minus 6, because we're talking about reducing a population downwards rather than increasing rather than something growing. So if we had one microorganism in a bottle of broth and we wanted that microorganism to grow, we'd be moving upwards and we might express that as 10 to the power of 6. But because we're discussing the destruction and elimination of microorganisms, we express this as a negative value. And I said we're demonstrating that through the use of biological indicators. Now the sterility assurance level is something that is dependent upon temperature and time. So with the illustration on the screen, at a given temperature, for example 121 degrees Celsius, where bacteria are killed at a rate proportionate to the number of microorganisms, then the destruction of those microorganisms is, as I said earlier, logarithmic. And if we look at the graph where we've got the letter Y, there is 10 to the power of 1 bacterium in one bottle. That means in 10 loads of single containers there will be a 1 chance in 10 that we have a surviving microorganism. However, at a different point in the graph as we move downwards, then we can reach a point where we're confident that we have a 10 to the power of 6 assurance that there's a bacterium left in one bottle. So that's a chance in one million that the load would be positive. So the number of microorganisms decreases exponentially depending upon the sterilization time. And a given temperature and time, the same proportion of microorganisms are killed irrespective of the total population. So in essence the hotter the temperature and the longer the time then the faster the kill rate and also we require a particular temperature and a particular time to get the optimal kill rate. So how do we know all of this? Well we need to use biological indicators. And biological indicators are special preparations of microorganisms in a spore state or endospore state. And biological indicators can be paper strips held in glassine envelopes, they can be solutions that undergo a colour change, or they can be on stainless steel discs. And biological indicators for heat sterilisation come with a certificate indicating their population, d-value and purity. And we want to have a sufficiently high population that we can demonstrate the required log reduction. So it's standard for the spore population range to be at a million spores or greater. And a common uh, microorganism used for the biological indicator to assess moist heat, as would we would with an autoclave, is Geobacillus sterothermophilus. 
which is highly resistant to heat. So further with biological indicators, um, a critical quality attribute is resistance. And resistance is the thermal death point. And this is the lowest temperature at which all microorganisms will be killed, provided we run the sterilization process for a sufficiently long period of time. This is sometimes called the thermal death time. And we assess this by something called the D value or decimal reduction value, which is a measure of resistance. And it's expressed as the number of minutes required to destroy one logarithm of microorganisms at a given temperature. Or in other words, the time required to destroy a microbial population by 90%. And the sterility assurance level is a function of the numbers of contaminating microorganisms per item and their resistance. So if we were to purchase biological indicators with a D value at 121 degrees Celsius, stated at 1.5 minutes, then this becomes the standard for operating an autoclave device. So this means that um, our spores on our spore strip will re be reduced by 90% after exposing the biological indicators and our autoclave load for 1.5 minutes at 121 degrees Celsius. And it then follows with each successive 1.5 minutes, the microorganisms decrease by a further one logarithm. Now, D values will vary according to different microorganisms, the temperature, the sterilization process, and the population challenge. So generally the higher the D value, the longer the time required or we will need to look at varying the temperature upwards. Now thinking about an autoclave for autoclave validation. Um, biological indicators there are key for assessing the efficacy of the autoclave. Now, the range of D121 is recommended by the pharmacopoeia. So the standard temperature for evaluating an autoclave is 121 degrees Celsius. And the European pharmacopoeia guides us to use biological indicators made from spores of Geobacillus sterothermophilus with a D value of 1.5 to 3 minutes. And most autoclave sterilization processes are then determined um, empirically by the time taken to inactivate one million spores of Geobacillus sterothermophilus. And typically there'd be 10 to 20 biological indicators placed in an autoclave cycle. We also have another concept that we need to consider for when we're doing autoclave cycle development. And this is the F concept. And in particular something called F sub zero which is normally written with a capital F and a lowercase zero. And this concerns equivalent lethality. And the origin of this term dates back to the food canning industry in the 1960s. An F sub zero is always linked to 121 degrees Celsius. And it allows us to consider at what temperature other than 121 degrees and for how long would deliver the same level of lethality, achieving this 1 million cell or spore reduction. So an F sub zero of eight minutes means that a process being conducted at whatever temperature and whatever time is equivalent in terms of lethality to 8 minutes and 121 degrees Celsius.
So this could be a higher temperature of 121 degrees for a shorter time or a lower temperature than 121 degrees for a longer time. So for example, if we want to run an autoclave at 110 degrees Celsius because that is optimal for uh, sterilizing microbiological culture media because it's um, damaged at a higher temperature, we would need to know how long to run that autoclave for. So if it takes us um, 12 minutes, for example, to sterilize at 121 degrees Celsius, then the F sub zero concept will tell us how long we need to run the autoclave at 110 degrees for. And that might be 20 minutes, for example. Conversely, if we're in a busy pharmaceutical facility and we want to get things through faster and the materials are sufficiently robust, then we might elect to run the autoclave at 134 degrees Celsius. So we could run it for a shorter time than 121 degrees. But for how long? We would need to use the F sub zero concept. And the reason for that is because all biological indicators are purchased, that we could purchase, are always certified at 121 degrees. So we need to introduce this theoretical mathematical concept to achieve that. And there are equations that can assist with that process. And you don't need to learn those equations, you just need to be familiar that there is this concept and that these equations are available to help you through that process. And we can then create variations to autoclave temperatures. Okay, so what makes a successful autoclave cycle? Um, well, we need to be able to demonstrate the destruction of the biological indicator, which we prove by subculturing it after it's been through the autoclave cycle. And we should be able to run a standard pharmaceutical cycle at 121 degrees for 15 minutes and easily achieve the desired level of microbial destruction. But these days there's a desire to go for what's called overkill cycles because in the industry we want to prove that we can um, get a much bigger level of sterility assurance. So we have the overkill cycle concept. Um, now we cannot create biological indicators that can give us anything more than a six log reduction because it's just not scientifically possible to create sufficiently large numbers of resistant spores. So we start to move into the theoretical. And again, there are different equations that can be used to assess overkill. But often the approach is taken that we establish the point between surviving and kill, and then we double the cycle runtime in order to achieve the overkill. And we start again into the theoretical possibility of a 12 log reduction, which gives us a far greater level of sterility assurance. Okay, so that brings this little video to an end. Uh, I am Tim Sandal, tutor for uh, three of the microbiology modules as part of the PAP program, and in particular in relation to the sterility and sterility assurance module. I hope this video has been useful, and good luck with your studies. Goodbye.